Today, Ben and I are going to visit uh, REA Solar at uh, Ratlam Bay. This is their uh, factory where they assemble one of the latest panel that is integrated with um, a micro inverter at the back. They're also expanding at the back as well, building another another factory at the back. So let's uh, come in and see what Michael has to say about this uh, new panel. So, so presenting the world's highest output uh, AC module. Now the beauty of this module is it's designed to produce more power from a smaller space. We produce power on the front and we produce power on the back of the panel as well. Um, now the, the benefit of an AC module is we can produce more energy um, with a lower KVA or lower peak output. Now most of the, uh, the grid approvals are starting to um, uh, knock people back for, for putting big systems in. Um, so rather than trying to produce all of that energy within a, a short three, four hour window, we're able to produce the, the energy with a lower peak, but a longer duration. So we turn on earlier and we turn off later. Now, there's a few reasons for that, our low and oblique light performance, but also it's the, the microinverter and the smarts that it is in this system. So it has a really low, what's called EPPT or maximum power point tracker startup. Um, now a conventional inverter, obviously all panels are connected in series to the inverter, uh, and generally you're looking anywhere between 100 and 200 volts uh, DC just to get the thing started. Um, now this will start in as low as 16 volts. Um, and also during the day or, or when we have low and I believe light or cloud <laughs> cover, um, we have capacitors in here which hold a charge to also keep that, um, that MPPT tracker on um, to, to ride over those, those periods. So we're not constantly turning off and turning on. So we squeeze more energy out of it as wow. well. Wow. It doesn't sound a lot, but if you can imagine 2%, 3% and then overall 10 to 15% more <laughs> performance, every single day mm -hmm. for 25 years, mm -hmm. we're able to generate a lot more energy. Mm -hmm. But also, we're able to generate it how you use it as well. Most homes, for example, rather than having a 10 kilowatt system, we only need, say, a six mm -hmm. to produce the same daily energy, mm -hmm. but because we're only peaking at six, mm -hmm. we're able to use more within your base load mm -hmm. as opposed to mm -hmm. selling it all back to the grid at a low mm -hmm. rate. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the big focus for us, is to produce the energy when you need it mm -hmm. and produce it safer and smarter. Mm -hmm. um, the other benefit of the AC module is within the assembly here in Australia, um, we do all of the plugging in, testing and tagging in the factory. So when it goes out to site, they simply grab it and click it into operation mode and then the AC cable then plugs into it. So the one, the, the, the number one um, point of failure in a solar panel is actually the MC4 plugs. Mm -hmm. Now the MC4 plugs, they're just made out of plastic. They're a great design, but they're really, the, the electrical principles, they're, they're really not meant to have a thousand volts running through them. Mm -hmm. um, now mm -hmm. conventional panels, you can see this one on the end, they daisy chain them all together. Yep. So you, you essentially have five to 600 volts direct current going through mm. this little plastic plug. Mm. Um, so he, essentially that, that is the thing that can fail. So um, in years to come, if you get a, an issue with a, a, a rodent chewing a cable yep. or you have intermittent connections, say the installer hasn't clicked it in properly, mm -hmm. um, which, which can happen um, when they're installed. Especially when they're having to plug in, um, you know, a, a large, yeah, multiple streams. If you have that issue, you can have an intermittent performance issue, but then also you can get DC arcing, mm. which is called a DC arc fault, mm -hmm. which can which can melt the plug, burn, and then catch fire. Mm. Um, but because over in the AC panel, we have a maximum of around 40 volts. That's mm -hmm. it, DC. Yep. So it makes it extra mm -hmm. low voltage. Mm -hmm. It means that you don't actually need to be an electrician to handle this panel mm -hmm. because it is safe. Wow. Um, and, uh, and the alternating current, the 240 um, that, that goes into here, mm -hmm. that converts to 240 volt, this isn't actually activated until you activate the circuit breaker. Mm. So it's fully circuit protected. Right. Now with a conventional solar system, mm -hmm. from the panels all the way down to the inverter, mm -hmm. it's always live. Mm. You can never switch it off. Mm -hmm. um, when we're running parallel AC, 
So from the circuit breakers all the way up to the, the panel itself, mm -hmm. um, it's fully circuit protected. So mm -hmm. if there is an mm -hmm. issue with any part of the system, mm -hmm. it would just trip the circuit breaker and then mm -hmm. notify you and let mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so safety-wise, it's the world's safest solar mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. We believe it's the future as well, being AC coupled. Mm -hmm. um, another benefit, if you can imagine having a system that's a few years old, yeah. like your, your current system, and you need to replace a panel, or you need to replace five panels or whatever, or, or you want to upgrade the system. You can't plug a new panel in with those existing panels. The industry moves so quickly. You know, when we started in the industry, we were dealing with 140 watt panels. And now they're 450 watts and they're dual, dual glass double-sided double, double -sided, um, performance. So that we, we, we go a long way. Um, we, we come a long way. So you know, in 10 years time, we could have a, a 1,000 watt panel. Uh, who knows? But with a conventional system, because they're all plugged together in series, if you need to replace the panel, then you need to replace it like for like. Um, and this is the current issue in the industry. The, the manufacturers, they may honor a warranty claim and supply you with a new panel, but most people can't do anything with it. They literally have to reduce their system size or try to look for a second-hand panel that will, that will fit. With the AC module, it's all independent. So if we have a 500-watt panel or a 600-watt panel, essentially you just connect that into the branch chain, the, um, the, the end of the AC cable, you just unplug it, plug it in, and, and away you go. So in terms of the future, for any warranty claims, for any upgrades, we're able to swap that out with the latest and greatest panel, and everything, the rest of your system isn't affected. Um, so expandability, um, warranty, replacements, um, and, and future proofing, adding batteries, adding EV chargers, we keep the whole system AC coupled. Yeah, so any questions? Oh, no. What's the size of the inverter? The micro okay, so, so your microinverter. Now, the beauty of this one itself, um, it's a 384 watt AC output. Mm -hmm. Now, most people would look at that and say, well, why do you have a 440 watt panel with an AC output mm -hmm. of, of 384? Mm -hmm. Now, there is a difference between what's called STC, or standard test condition, mm -hmm. and, uh, and NOCT, which is normal operating conditions. Mm -hmm. So most panels that are, are, say, 400, 440 watt, mm -hmm. they will operate at uh, anywhere between 250 and 300 watts mm -hmm. output mm -hmm. um, in normal operating conditions. Mm -hmm. um, our module sits right at that 384 output mm -hmm. on the front. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that we're producing power on the front and on the back, but we're able to keep this at 100% um, mm -hmm. output as long as possible. Mm -hmm. So early mm -hmm. morning and late in the afternoon, we're obviously mm -hmm. not going to get 100% mm -hmm. output. Mm -hmm. So what we lose in the, what we mm -hmm. call clipping mm -hmm. in the middle of the day, mm -hmm. where it can't output Mm -hmm. um, to the level that the panel can produce. We actually pick that up in the morning and the afternoon by producing more energy. Mm -hmm. So when the sun goes down, we may have clipped in the middle of the day, mm -hmm. but our overall generation mm -hmm. is higher mm -hmm. than having a system that would say have a higher output, but we're not pushing it to its mm -hmm. limit and, mm -hmm. um, and, and having that maximum efficiency mm -hmm. out of the system. But so on cloudy day would be really good. Exactly. So mm -hmm. so cloudy days, um, but but in perfect sun yes. as well, yeah. um, because we generally see a, a, a mm -hmm. roof surface temperature of anywhere between fifty and seventy degrees. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the panels obviously don't perform mm -hmm. at what their STC rating is, mm -hmm. but we get as close as possible to mm -hmm. do to, to that mm -hmm. performance, mm -hmm. uh, and we hold that uh, through mm -hmm. throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And the temperature coefficient for this panel. So the temperature coefficient of this panel, because we we have a, an entire HJT cell, um, it's zero point two. So mm -hmm. it is the the best temperature coefficient in the industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. most are anywhere between. 0.29 and, and 0.35 now um, with, with a, a top con. Your panel is Hyundai. No, no. So, so we actually, the, the originally, so we, we've been manufacturing modules now since 2014. Our original partnership was Hyundai. Um, so, so we worked with Hyundai um, under a contract manufacturing agreement. They manufactured our design module. Um, so we're completely independent now. Um, We've, we've, in conjunction with Central Queensland University, and uh, we're doing a research project as well with UQ. So we mm -hmm. currently supplied them with our new top secret mm -hmm. cells. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, mm -hmm. we use, we, we do contract manufacturing. Um, we have designed our mm -hmm. fully automated uh, mm -hmm. assembly line, mm -hmm. um, which we have three facilities globally. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And we hope to bring that to Australia within mm -hmm. the next two years. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. So, nice. but the cells themselves, mm -hmm. um, there, there is a, there is a Japanese partner um, mm -hmm. that is that is 
mm -hmm. one of the world, well, the world leader in mm -hmm. HJT technology, um, and they actually have one of the uh, the leading project managers or the the, mm -hmm. the fathers of um, of HJT, um, mm -hmm. originally from Sanyo and then Panasonic. Mm -hmm. So that's a little hint for yeah. you. HJT panel is good. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, it is. It, it is the future. Mm. Um, mm. And uh, and then the, the next generation is tandem mm. cells. So working mm. on on putting uh, perovskite and other different uh, mm. substrates to the mm. silicon cell to boost that efficiency. Okay. Yeah. So if you have a shiny roof, mm -hmm. like you can get double reflection. Yeah, you can get more like performance on the back, but it's not mm -hmm. just that. It's, mm -hmm. it's the, the radiation hitting the panel. Um, mm. Obviously, it, it moves so fast, there's only so much that can um, uh, be converted into energy. Mm -hmm. So we're getting as many bites of the cherry as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and also turning on that system mm -hmm. earlier and turning it off later to increase yep. yep. the runtime. Yep. Yep. Um, and then moving forward, the, the other big benefit of the AC system mm -hmm. is when you're coupling it with a battery. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at um, uh, our battery systems, uh, we have a, a prototype battery which we're working on um, uh, being assembled in Australia at the moment. Um, this is just our first prototype. And then obviously we have the Tesla Powerwall 2, which is the AC coupled um, Powerwall. Mm -hmm. Now, batteries themselves, there, there, there has been a lot of tests with batteries, um, and uh, particularly with the safety concerns. Now. What we have found with our research and independent research, in, in particularly in America with emergency services, most batteries are safe. Now they are safe in the way that their they, they, battery management system and their design is fundamentally safe. So there is very, very little chance of having a fire or having an issue with a battery um, as long as the external temperature of the battery is kept at a reasonable level. So with most of the testing that has come out, the batteries actually caught on fire or went, in, went into what we call thermal runaway and off-gassing mm -hmm. due to an external heat source, mm -hmm. not internal. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't actually make the battery fail by overcharging the battery mm -hmm. or affecting the BMS. Mm -hmm. They did a, the, 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 the battery management systems and the designs, and this is across the board from mm -hmm. Chinese-made batteries to German-made to American-made, mm -hmm. most of them were, were, were very, very robust. So the batteries across the board are, are, are quite safe. Now, where they became unsafe in the testing is having an external heat source. Now, this is the biggest issue with the industry is currently most of the designs, in order to make the, the systems lower in cost, they're reducing the, the components in the system. So they're going to DC coupled or hybrid where they, they put all of the high voltage DC down into the hybrid inverter, which converts the energy to AC um, into the home, or it converts, it all pushes it in DC to charge those batteries. Now the biggest problem with that, if you can imagine with a, a conventional solar system, what is the highest chance of a fire or a, or a, um, a external heat source? And that's that DC arc fault at the inverter. And what are companies doing? They're sticking it on top of the battery, which is just crazy. So we believe that a, a DC inverter or any high voltage DC above 100 volts DC need to be kept miles away from the battery. So if, if we are hoping that the uh, regulatory standards will change, where if you have a DC system, move that inverter miles away from that battery, mm -hmm. have an AC coupled battery, mm -hmm. rather than a hybrid system where you're having your DC strings straight in, mm -hmm. uh, because you don't want to have the risk mm -hmm. having no circuit protection, mm -hmm. having a DC arc mm -hmm. fault that can cause a fire, mm -hmm. and that can, that can burn at 2000 degrees. Mm -hmm. Now, with the testing, the external heat source actually mm -hmm. wasn't that big. So mm -hmm. what they found was 93 degrees, so between 90 and 93 degrees external mm -hmm. heat source, um, was was called essentially if you had an external heat source that was heating the cells to around 93 degrees they would then go into thermal runaway and off gassing and most of that that actual gas was hydrogen so you're literally creating a Hindenburg it was really really bad so it's really important with batteries they will be safe as long as you keep that external heat source away um, and, and, and below well below that 90 degrees uh, Celsius. So what we are doing is actively working with Enphase um, to, to develop 
the world's safest battery. Um, so by having the microinverters in the battery itself, or having an AC coupled battery, again, we're keeping all of the, the DC high voltage away from the system. Rather than having a high voltage DC battery system, it's a low voltage DC. So we're AC coupled on the roof, we're producing 240 volt AC into the battery, and then the battery itself, it, the, the uh, management of the battery is converting it down to low voltage. So we're actually around about 60 volts DC um, to charge those batteries, and then back to 240 volt AC. So as long as you can keep your DC voltage under 100 volts, you don't have an arcing issue, and you don't have a, a, a potential fire issue. Um, and, and that's why we believe AC coupling, for the couple of percent you lose mm -hmm. you've got that peace of mind that you have a safe system mm -hmm. um, and, and that ultimately is what we what mm -hmm. we uh, promote is safety mm -hmm. performance mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. line the, the new um, Power War 3, is, yes. that a, is that a DC? Yeah, so it's a, Tesla have really, it's, it's very strange how they've mm -hmm. gone in a different direction. Mm -hmm. Now, what they have done, particularly in America, mm -hmm. is they're bringing the DC strings straight in, but they're trying to lower the voltage of the strings by mm -hmm. having multiple NPPTs or multiple mm -hmm. inputs. So mm -hmm. rather than having just two inputs, mm -hmm. they have six to 12 inputs mm -hmm. to, to comply with rapid shutdown. Now, mm -hmm. as far as I'm aware, what's mm -hmm. coming into Australia at the moment um, towards the end of the year will we'll, we'll be a, a limited version of what um, what the American one is so I believe it's only going to be four DC inputs so you're still going to be over 250 volts DC into the battery um, time will tell how they have, have mitigated that potential fire issue um, but um, yeah I, I personally believe that um, we need to stick with, with AC coupled and that's why I think that the Tesla Powerwall 2 is a, is a better definitely, overall unit definitely Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Especially for an existing mm, existing mm, installation. Mm, mm. So. What, what's the warranty on this? So it's a twenty five year full replacement warranty on the system. <laughs> um, the microinverter has a twenty five year full replacement warranty, mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. power has a twenty five year full replacement mm -hmm. warranty. Um, the performance is a thirty year performance guarantee. Mm -hmm. So providing everything is all how it should be mm -hmm. and hasn't been tampered with, it should produce that power to 90% of, of, of day one's performance mm -hmm. uh, in 30 years. So it's a really high warranty. Um, and, and we do that by having a, a, a robust design. So mm -hmm. it's a dual glass design. Mm -hmm. uh, most panels actually fail due to the back sheet or the plugs with that mm -hmm. high voltage. Um, mm -hmm. They have PID, they have LID. Um, and again, that's your high voltage, high temperature. Mm -hmm. We don't have any of that in our system. Mm -hmm. And we have a dual glass panel. Now, what's unique about our panel compared to our other competitors that have dual glass is they run 1.6 mil. We run 2 mil front, 2 mil back. So we actually have uh, 4 mil of, of ARC um, glass. So um, it is the strongest panel as well on the market. Yeah. Great. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're